If thoughts are things, if it is our internal mental reality that creates, to one degree or another, the external world that we see, then we must all be very careful about what we give intense thought to, or what we contemplate on a regular basis. If the inner essence of man creates the outer world that we consider objective fact, as such, the things we engage in, in the course of our ordinary lives, even the kind of work that we do to make a living, affect the totality of our lives in powerful, and sometimes unexpected ways. A person dedicating any amount of time or effort to a task, must understand that they will be affected by the power of such efforts, in ways that can have reverberations in their lives and in the lives of others. For example, think about a person that dedicates a great deal of effort to one particular project. This project could be building a house, drawing a picture, or engaging in some kind of vocation. Such actions, like all action, are really the focus of, and the manipulation of, energy, which we then classify as either mental or physical movement and change. The attention of the mind focuses and begins to move energy in one particular direction, in order to create a thing. This thing may begin as a purely internal thought, and develop into a complex psychological structure. Eventually though, this internal essence begins to manifest outwardly in what we refer to as physical reality. A person engaged in building or creating a house for example, may lay out plans, consider possibilities, and begin to amass enough energy to motivate themselves to get started in what may be a big and complicated project. They may gather the money and materials needed to make this house, which is of itself the psychic act of attracting wealth and resource. All of this effort requires focus, so that in time, the house that is being built inside the mind becomes as concrete physically, as it may have already become mentally. Each blow from a physical hammer, helps to create a type of biofeedback loop between an internal creation of the mind, and what is the final physical creation of a completed building in our objective world. A laborer then, or an architect, is a creator. Someone who takes a mental structure and turns that supposedly ethereal thing into a physical thing. And during that creation process, and perhaps for years after, that creator will dream, contemplate, and be affected by all of the subjective, that is psychic, actions that went into the manifestation of that house. Such psychic actions have weight a weight that is sometimes even more powerful than any physical weight could possibly be. Imagine then the weight of purely artistic creations, creations that require not just logical calculations and considerations, but emotional and highly psychological ones as well. An actor for example, as a prerequisite of his or her profession, needs to become an imaginary character, and as the great acting teacher, Sanford Meisner said, behave truthfully under imaginary circumstances. Under the weight of such mental machinations, an actor is quite deliberately creating a mental structure, in the form of an imaginary character that they must portray, and then infuse that character with a great deal of emotion, and intent, as the play, that is performance, progresses. And as many know, such intense emotion and direction of intent, is the basic prerequisite for a magical creation, indeed a powerful manifestation. Such internal actions, can create incredibly powerful inner structures, just like the house I referenced earlier. But unlike a house that can be laid to rest in a way, after the physical end result has been fully realized, a mental structure, like a powerful character that an actor must portray, is usually bound to a type of psychological, and therefore psychic existence alone. Such existence is really a thought form creation, and such creations can have a weight that is life-altering. The powerful weight of these thought form essences, that a good actor can create, can be even dangerous at times, so an actor should learn to deal with these internal constructions because they can cause external manifestations as well. 
Since the more truthful a character becomes in the mind of the actor, the more powerful that these psychic structures become, an actor can rightfully ask, how can an actor portray a strong character, and perform in many different plays, without these created thought forms affecting his or her regular life? Firstly, it is interesting to note that in ancient times, actors were considered magicians, and the craft of the bard was considered to be a very legitimate way to attain magical power and enlightenment. Such forces then, created within the subjective mind, can turn into powerful free-roaming thought forms. Such free-roaming thought forms can be very difficult to deal with, if an actor does not know how to banish such energy effectively. When a servitor is created by a magician for example, which is a type of constrained and tasked thought form, the servitor is usually bound to the creator, and a good creator makes sure that his creation follows his or her will implicitly. An actor though, who in modern times is not engaged in creating a bound servitor thought form for a specific task, can sometimes find him or herself feeling the after-effects of the intense manipulation of awareness that a good artistic performance usually demands. This difficulty increases proportionally to the amount of energy, emotional or otherwise, expended in this performance, and the amount of time that the actor must continue with this play or performance. Such problems usually arise because the strong manipulations of awareness usually begin to manifest very strong thought forms that will linger after the performance. These performances can also over time rewire the neural patterns in the brain, for example making a certain emotion a more common feature of a personality, or perhaps making a certain belief truly believable within the mind of the actor. And if the character portrayed in the play is of a dark or destructive nature, then this character's psyche can invade the actor's regular life after the play is done, with negative consequences. In order to deal with these psychic creations and neurological alterations, a strong method actor needs to develop some kind of banishing ritual that allows them to break the hold of his creations. There are a number of banishing rituals that you can find online in order to try and protect yourself from the consequences of the manipulations of awareness that an actor might go through. I personally do not find many, if any, of these banishing rituals to be very powerful. As such I have written a book explaining the only banishing ritual that I would personally advocate. The name of this book is, The Vampire's Way to Psychic Self-Defense. In this book I teach the most powerful technique for dealing with negative energy that I currently know. The fundamental premise of this book is the idea that we can learn to ingest the psychic energy that we push out from ourselves in the form of intense emotions, thoughts, and feelings. If you have any experience with Qigong, Reiki or perhaps Pramayana, then you know about energy manipulation in one form or another. The book though does deal implicitly with the ability to absorb and grow in power thanks to this ingestion. It also deals with the many complexities of this energetic technique in relation to psychic attack, which I believe is invaluable in this modern era. Once they understand what this basic technique entails, as it is explained in this book, an actor can use this technique in the following manner. Right after every performance and most definitely at the end of the play cycle, an actor should engage in the act of ingesting all of the psychic energy that they have expelled from themselves during the performance. To do this, what they need to do is find a quiet place where they will not be disturbed for a while, and begin to suck into themselves all of the psychic energy expelled, as they relive the play in their minds. For example, an actor should close their eyes and relive their performance in their imagination. As they are doing this, they may find that they will begin to experience some of the emotions and some of the intensities that they experienced while actually playing this character on stage. When these intensities present themselves, the actor should use that energy ingestion methodology to suck up the energy that he or she may feel. 
they should continue to do this as they experience the whole performance in their mind. Throughout their day as well, as they find themselves experiencing the emotions and intensities that they think are directly related to the performance that they had to give, they should use that same methodology to suck up that energy, so that the actor may then drain those thoughts and intensities of all the energy that these psychic structures may contain. They should then continue to do this as often as is needed, until they find relief. Such a technique will allow an actor to take back the energy that is responsible for whatever problems they may have after their performance. In time, as an actor removes the energy from the new neural patterns they have created, this extra energy will allow them to create new neural patterns that are more in line with their true personality. In this way an actor can take back the energy that they give up in their performances and can then use that energy to re-establish their real personality once again. Through this technique, an actor is not just banishing something from an area, which can be bad because such powerful creations can come back to haunt them again when they least expect it. Instead they are actually ingesting the energy that brought that psychic event into existence, in the first place. If you would like to know more about how to deal with negative energy of all sorts, including negative thought forms, psychic attacks from other people, and even psychic attacks from parasitic entities, I recommend the book. The Vampire's Way to Psychic Self-Defense. I will leave a link to the book in the description below.